Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Bernadette's. We, today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth bring forth a Savior. With hearts brimming with expectation for the Lord's coming, we gather. Our celebrant this morning is Monsignor Ryan. Please stand.
mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as an animal, or as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? But must you also wear my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom you were also called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. came another. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with the child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel story about God communicating with Joseph through a dream is a great reminder to us that God can communicate with us in any number of ways. The important thing is for us to be open and alert to God's presence and communications. You and I know from life experience that communication is a two-way street. No matter how much you or I want to communicate with another person. 
the effectiveness of that communication will depend on whether the person wants to communicate with us, whether they are willing to listen, to pay attention, to give us the gift of their time. And this is true not only with human communication, but also in our communication with God. Scripture tells us time and again that God has a deep, deep desire to communicate ever more deeply with each one of us. If we limit the means and the time for God to communicate with us, then more often than not, we're not even aware. We're not present to the various ways in which God is trying to communicate with us through the events and through the circumstances of our daily lives. I began reading a book lately that I had read probably 30 years back. I thought it was time to pick it up again. It's called The Power of Now, written by Eckhart Tully. One of the central points of this book is the difficulty us humans have in being present or attentive to the present moment in our lives. And he says, you know, one of the great obstacles that gets in our way, believe it or not, is our own thinking. The ability to think, which is a great gift. But sometimes, instead of, of allowing us to be truly present to whatever is going on in our lives in that moment, or to be truly present to another person, the power to think has a strong tendency to distract us. And where is God to be found? if not in the present moment. That's why most of us would readily admit that one of the greatest struggles in prayer life is distraction. Over the years, time and again, people have talked about this. I wish I didn't get so distracted when I go to Mass or when I do some private prayer. Our minds tend to wander so easily. And it takes us away from giving our undivided attention, whether it's to the present moment or to somebody who's talking to us or to God. And again, the pity about that is God is to be found, not in the past, not in the future. God is to be found in the present moment. Now we can't change the tendency overnight of being so distracted by our thinking. Maybe some of us would say, since I came into Mass this morning, my mind has been in four or five different places. How do we get a handle on that? The beginning. The beginning is to be aware. Aware of how our thinking leads us in a whole lot of different places. Anywhere except being in the present moment. As we pray, during Mass this morning, as we pray during the week, as we meet people and have conversations with them, let's just become aware of how our thinking oftentimes gets in the way of being truly present in the moment.
that is standing to test our faith. I believe in the one of God, the Father of all life, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because I not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the righteous Father. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He was not of any glory to judge the living and the dead. In his kingdom of heaven and rain. I believe from the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one the Holy God and the Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the God is with us. God is with us right now in all of God's power and glory and love. So let's give him our undivided attention as we ask him for what we need. For our Pope and all who lead the church, that the season of Advent and Christmas will inspire their leadership and grant them continued strength and hope. We pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from mental illness, that their lives will find and experience the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all of those among us who struggle with difficult and impossible situations, that the season will bring peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those who feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and comfort the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the dearly departed, especially for Pablo Vega, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in peace of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let's continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine. Yesterday and the day before were bad days for them, where missiles once again killed the innocent and destroyed resources. Let's pray that somehow, some way, as we approach Christmas, that the Lord will bring lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. God our Father, as we celebrate this last week of Advent. So many things to do, so many things to accomplish, and time can be so short. Help us through the power of your Spirit to be aware of the presence of your Son with us at every moment of our life. Help us to be aware of the dignity and importance of every person we encounter during this week. And above all, enable us to give you our undivided attention. When we pray for you, we ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice in yours may be accepted with God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end, we are thank. Therefore, as we 
resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Myron our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be comers to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> Active spiritual communion. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. It's one of the constants in life, constants of the past. Uh, if you've taken a tag off the angel of the tree, please drop off the gift no later, no later than today, after the 12 p.m. Mass, by the Christmas tree in the back. Please join us on Wednesday, December 21st. Pray the novena to Our Lady of Perpetual Event at 6.30 p.m. in the parish hall. Christmas Eve Masses will be at 3.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m., and 9 p.m. On Christmas Day, we will have our regular Sunday schedule, 8, 10, and 12 o'clock Masses. The parish office will be closed Friday, December 23rd, and Monday, December 26th, we will still have Mass at 8 a.m. on both of those days in the chapel. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and the love. Jesus Christ.